I don't light it. They'll wait to hand me on the hand, stay on play. Keep it up, Jiggy, make it feel like it's full of Yo, my car show is in the minute. You're in the hall. Big Willie Styles, all in it. Jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. All right, there is a uh, new study out uh, that that I swear uh, Binghamton uh, Binghamton University, uh, State University in New York, uh, put this out, and they are revealing a study that was commissioned by a bunch of sluts apparently that um, that, that 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 promiscuity is actually related to a gene and a dopamine uh, uh, enhan- uh, dopamine enhancing gene that is found in your genetic code, your DNA, that it really has nothing to do your your propensity to sleep around, to get jiggy with it, is not related to an ethical dilemma you might have, or whether you were sat on a wet potty seat too often uh, when you were eight years old and scarred for life. Actually, the reason you're promiscuous is because God did it to you. (laughs) And you can't argue with perfection, right? Um, So, the the point here is that uh, we... uh, I am confused on this, Jared. Uh, to me, it sounds like one big happy excuse. Um, this DR, what are they calling it? DRD4 is the genetic uh, thing that allows you to uh, that that allows you to you know run out and get frisky uh, more frequently. Um, I'm guessing if if you're on date night now, I, I guess you basically will weed out the men or women you're go you're 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 going to be seeing. Basically, oh, are you a dr a drd four? Are you? Yeah. Are you not? Okay, forget it. It's when, just not going to work. Out. When it's Cosmo produces the list of top ten foods to produce drd four, then you know then yeah. you know it's it's arrived at yeah. that point. It's in soy lattes, yeah. men. Yeah. Stay away from it. I, <laughs> seriously, they said. I mean, soy increases estrogen levels. It makes you a more sensitive man. So drink to your health. Right. Yeah. The uh, the <laughs> I just this this to me is crazy. This this is crazy. I mean, it, it, to, because here's here's the thing. I think this is an excuse. I mean, we live in a society today that uh, that that re- re- honestly, we are very uncomfortable about ethics. We are very uncomfortable with the notion, even having the notion that there might be such thing as good or bad behavior, ethical or unethical behavior. We don't even like those those categories. And so we have science to back us up. Yeah. Uh, misreading this? or Well, I mean, it does eliminate the need for right and wrong, and it's just, well, oh, yeah. you know, nature did it to me. If it feels good, do don't, it. Don't say and, God. You can't say God. You can't say God. Don't say no, God. You're right. No. I, mean, you know, I mean, if it feels good, do it. And, uh, <laughs> and honestly, it's, you're not to blame it if it feels good. You just were more endowed than just, the next person. <laughs> I guess. You're just born that way. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. I mean, right. I never thought a gene would be sexy, but the gene is sexy. DRD4. So go figure. Um, tell you, uh, speaking of getting screwed, there's uh, another, another uh, issue in the news right now that a lot of folks are becoming more and more aware of is, is screwing the country. And that is the Federal Reserve and the way our monetary system works. Um, The reason I bring this up is because a longtime stalwart, uh, Congressman Ron Paul, who wrote a book, uh, was writing a book called End the Fed, is uh, soon to be the House subcommittee chair that oversees the Federal Reserve. And uh, middle January, when this group takes over, the new group in Congress, he will get that chairmanship. He's already saying he's going to audit the thing. He's already saying he's going to usher in a new day. My big question is, set aside for a moment, all of the history behind how we got here and, and how bad off we are and the way our money system works, what's your goal? I mean, I, I guess the first question is here, if you're going to audit the Fed, what is your goal at this point? How reasonable is it? And if you don't have a good course of action, uh, how much good are you doing? Yeah, nothing scares me in Washington like bipartisan support. That really, that's when I get nervous. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of bipartisan support on this. And I, I don't know why, uh, you know, and and it's, um, not that I'm against auditing the Fed, because uh, I, you know, I disagree with Ron on uh, a number of things. I call all the politicians by their first name, by the way. Uh, <laughs> like if you're on a first name, oh, yeah. we're, we're buddies. Coffee yesterday, he was a great guy. Exactly. You know, he's, he's <clears> so uh, you know, can, but go ahead. I, I disagree with Ron from time to time, but uh, you know, on this one, I think he's right on the money, and it, it's that you, you know, we need to know what's going on in the Fed. But what it does scare me is that he's been given this ability through the Dodd and uh, finance thing that just went through that finance bill, and mm-hmm. um, you know, it's named after Chris Dodd, so that's 
that's not a good sign right there of itself. What do you think was just an oversight, the Dodd-Frank bill was just an oversight on this part that they didn't? Because you can't imagine that they would have wanted to hand him a hammer against the Federal Reserve, given their track record. When they were passing that bill, I don't think they knew that Ron Paul was going to head up the subcommittee. But, um, you know, but there was certainly a lot of Democrats on board and a lot of Democrats that when you look at the list, not the blue dogs. I mean, it's you look at the list and you go, really, Barney Frank? Really? Uh, You know, why are why are these guys the ones that want to do it? So I am a little concerned. Uh, no, I'm a lot concerned about what everybody's end games are on this. Uh, but I'm not so concerned that I would say, well, you know, don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> you well, I mean, absolutely need to go in and, and pry open the gate. Well, and, and it, you've a right to be concerned because this would not be the first time that Congress has been swindled by the uh, the banking community that makes uh, that is the oversight committee for this private group called the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve Board that they, they uh, cons- consist of. Uh, I mean, when this all started, historically speaking, it was the uh, – it, 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 it came into existence – because of a swindled Congress. You had uh, just brief history. You had uh, Senator Aldrich at the time, uh, and what became the Aldrich Bill was responsible for coming up with the legislation that eventually called the Federal Reserve Act into being. The problem was Aldrich was seen as a big bank tycoon, and so they uh, that, that bill failed on his name alone. Well, he was out of the picture the next election cycle, and the banking interest knew they had to renegotiate this whole thing to make it work. So enter the new guy, Carter Glass, who was in the House and, uh, and who ultimately was against all of this. And, 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 and he, like the American people at the time, said, we don't want it. We do not want a, 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 a central banking system controlled by big bank interests, mostly in New York. And so we're going to stand against this. What happened, though, interestingly enough, since Carter Glass's House Banking Committee was responsible for drafting the new legislation, because they, the common interest at the time was that everyone knew there was already too much control in the banks. We had to do something because we'd already suffered numerous boom-bust cycles in the economy. So they had to come up with something. And so he, by his own admonition, doesn't know the way banking works all that well. He contracts a guy who does who happens to be planted by the same banking interests that had helped write the Aldrich Bill. So they draft this whole new legislation. They convince him that it's the antithesis of what it actually is. And when he goes to the Senate side, they have to win over one William Jennings Bryan. William Jennings Bryan being one who was against it all along as well, said it doesn't give enough control to the government. It puts too much control in the hands of the banks. And so he comes back. He was won over by being convinced that it did the exact opposite, that it actually gave, uh, because the president would get the power uh, and the executive would get the power to appoint the, the, the heads of the, of the committee, and that the treasury would actually produce the currency, which they don't produce the currency, that would be unconstitutional, they produce the bonds that the Fed buys, loans out, and it's turned into currency. It went through. And at the end of the day, long story short, we have a system now, a Federal Reserve system that got in on the backs of people who completely disagreed with the concept of the very system they put in place. So a long about roundabout way of saying it's happened before, yeah. it's a valid fear. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a battle that goes back to the founding of the country, too, when you look at the first national bank, and then we got rid of that, and then now you have the Federal Reserve, and there's a lot of people that want to get rid of that, mind count me among them. But, it, you know, this is way too much power to to put into these people's hands, and hopefully, the, you know, I it, it scares me tremendously what we're going to find out and what people's reaction to this are going to be, because, um, you, you know, we kind of know what's in there. We kind of know that uh, they've printed a bunch of money and that, you know, we're, uh, we're in Zimbabwe land right now. Yeah. Um, you know, third Reich uh, kind of deal. Uh, you know, we're going to have a little problem here soon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, the, um, until we actually peel it back and there's hard numbers and people actually see it, it doesn't really become reality. So, um, you know, but it's something that we're we. It's a tough pill. And we're going to have to swallow it, and it and hopefully we get out in this conversation well before that, well, that moment comes. Yeah, and my my big thing here, maybe you can react to this, but I think you've got to do a certain series of things before you can even entertain the concept of of changing something this massive. Uh, understanding the way our monetary system works, we're a debt based currency model now, a fractional reserve model for those of you who get that, and ultimately that means that we cannot uh, that that we can't just do away 
with the Federal Reserve because the federal notes are all we have left in, in yeah. the form of currency. You abolish the Fed at this point, you deplete the currency. There is no currency anymore. Ba- basically, you have nothing to, to go on. So before any of this happens, there are a series of legislative acts that must happen to form a, a foundation to replace it with. Uh, yeah. I mean, am I right? Yeah, it's not going to be, about this it's not gonna be easy gonna to do. There. Yeah, it, and, and it's you can't just flip the switch and be like, oh, okay, and we're on back on we're on the gold standard or silver standard or yeah, platinum, whatever. You can't just you can't just turn one on and turn the other off and people just go about their lives. And um, unfortunately, there's probably not a a uh, painless or pain light way to go about this. Yeah, uh, it, it's going to be ugly, but I I th- I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to be less ugly if we uh, confront it and deal deal with it than as we end up with wheelbarrows and run into the bank oh, yeah. to print, you know, trying to grab money and buy a loaf of bread with a oh, wheelbarrow yeah. full of money. Because the, the fear that's causing all this, calling all this into being and creating a climate where we're actually for the first time in decades looking at this seriously and reading up on it is that we have Ben Bernanke under major attack and uh, we, have, uh, we have a Fed that is quantitative easing too three and four possibly on the way these guys will spend it until their hearts uh, to their hearts content their hearts are never contented meanwhile across the pond they're buying commodities left and right they are dumping our dollar to invest it in hard assets the kind of things that make you see yourself being made. it's a big battle and it's one we're going to be following very closely we'll see you tomorrow